Hey, Archer Fish Tank. This is Alta. She has been living in the aquarium with the archers, but now it's time for her to go live with my nephew, Jackson. And uh, he is going to take care of her. This is going to let us raise the water level in the tank and give the archers a better suited environment that they need. This video today is all about how to feed Alta. Alta is a Nelson's milk snake. She's related to a California uh, mountain king snake. They have red and black and white stripes. A Nelson's milk snake is bred so that the red stripes are longer and the black and white stripes are smaller. This makes her a red snake with black and white bands instead of a striped snake. Now she's kind of dull right now because she's getting ready to shed, but there's nothing I can do about that. I can't uh, wait and make the video after she sheds because today she is going with my nephew Jackson to a new home. So this is what she looks like when she's about to shed. After she finishes, she is a beautiful, bright red snake. Uh, we fed her two days ago, so you'll see her looking good in the video. Well, let's get right to how do we feed Alta? I regularly feed her with frozen mice. You can pick those up at most pet stores. These are from PetSmart. Um, she eats medium mice. They come four in a box. She can kill and eat live mice, but frozen mice are just much easier for me. I can put them in my freezer, and when it's time to feed her, I can just grab the box out of the freezer, thaw out a mouse, and give it right to her. Thawing out a mouse is easy. You just start the hot water running. We are not going to microwave mice. That is a no-no. You only thaw them out with hot water. Warm water from the tap is good enough. You just separate out the mouse that you want to freeze and you put the rest back in the freezer. Make sure that you use a dedicated snake cup. You don't want to be uh, your family doesn't want you using the same cups that you thawed the mice out that they're drinking from. Uh, just cut open the bag, fill up the cup with water, and put the mouse in the hot water. After five to ten minutes, the mouse should be all thawed out, and now you need to dry it off. Usually takes me two paper towels to do this. The first one that just gets most of the wet, like sopping wet water out of the mouse's fur. And the second one dries it off really nicely. Now, in this case, this mouse was curled up. So I want to straighten its head and its leg, push all its legs down. It's much easier for Alta to eat the mouse if its legs are pushed down and she doesn't have to do that as she eats it. If the mice were live and she killed them fresh, you don't have this problem. But when they're frozen, sometimes you need to push those legs down for her. Now you'll notice as I rolled that mouse up and now as I'm putting her in the tank that I don't touch the mouse directly with my fingers. I was careful to always keep a paper towel between me and the mouse. It's not because touching a dead mouse is gross. It's because we don't want to get human smells on something that the snake is eating. Uh, we want to make sure we never teach her that something that smells like a human is something to eat or bite. So you can see that Alta, as soon as she smells that mouse in the cage, she kind of gets, becomes active. She starts looking around the cage, wandering around. She flicks her tongue out. She actually smells with that tongue, and the forked tongue of a snake allows them to tell the difference between smells that are on the right side or on the left side, because they put that tongue out, flip it around in the air, they pull it back in, and they can taste that the smell is stronger to the left or to the right, and it allows them to follow that scent. 
So when it's time to feed, snakes have basically three modes that they operate in. One is hunting, and that's what she's doing right now. She smells the prey, she's seeking it out and hunting it. Then there's killing, and then finally eating. And with a frozen mouse that I thawed out for her, we kind of just skip that killing part. She's hunting, and you imagine that she did the killing, and then she flips straight into eating mode. Uh, that's what we're going to see today. So there's two types of snakes that we're generally familiar with, and they are vipers and constrictors. A viper is a snake that delivers venom when it bites. It has fangs, it bites the prey, and delivers venom that incapacitates and kills the prey. A constrictor, like Alta, doesn't have venom. Uh, a constrictor grabs onto the prey and wraps around it and squeezes it until it dies. And that's where we are right now. With a frozen and thawed mouse and with Alta finding it here on the rock, it's as if she just finished constricting it and now she's ready to consume it. She begins by just kind of checking out this mouse. She's going to look at the front. She's going to look at the back. She's going to make sure that it's the right size and that she'll be able to eat it. And uh, she even gets confused and bites the tail and bites the back of it. Eventually, she will work her way around and eat it from the head. Um, I have never seen her successfully eat a mouse from the, from the tail end first. Uh, she always has to go to the head and start there. And sometimes it just takes her a while. It's just normal. And we have to never touch her, never bother her. Just give her the time and let her work it out. Oh, look at that. Let's, uh, let's watch that again. Look at her exercise her jaw before she eats. Now, this is the part that you don't show your mom or your wife if you want to be able to have a snake in the house. Okay, so we'll just speed this up. Uh, she just messes around, going back and forth for a while. And again, this is normal. Don't interfere. Just leave her and let her do her thing. Uh, she's gonna find the head right here. She bites the neck and then works her way over the nose and she's in business. Now the rest is just slowly opening her jaw. The, her bottom jaw is elastic and it can stretch in order to fit the mouse. And she just works her way and pushes and pulls that mouse into her mouth and down into her body. Now she has swallowed the mouse and it goes down her esophagus, slowly moving down. A snake has an esophagus. It has a stomach. It has intestines just like us. It's just all in a straight line along the length of their body. So she will move that lump down and down and down until it gets right into the middle of her body and it will stay there. That's where her stomach is while she digests it over the next two weeks. Now I have sped up parts of this video to make it easier and faster to watch as an instructional video. If you want to see the full uncut real-time video of Alta eating that mouse, I will be posting it and making it available on my channel. You can click on the link or go and search for the, the full footage of Alta eating that mouse. So after her meal, she just comes down here to touch the water. And here come the archer fish to check out what's moving by the water's edge. And they decide, oh, we don't want to mess with that. As you look, you can see the, the lump where the mouse is just passing in front of us. 
and going into that cave. Hey everybody, thank you for watching. If you learned something new, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from this channel about this aquarium, remember to hit the subscribe button. And Jackson, I hope this video helps you as you are taking Alta home with you and you'll start taking care of her. This is Archer Fish Tank. Reach outside your world.